that educational, now to bring out a man I'm thrilled to have here. As I mentioned, this comic is simply one of the best in the world. We're thrilled to welcome Bill Burr. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, this one over here. Oh, what's going on? What's up, man? How are you? How are you? I know, it's confusing. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Ah. All right. You're dressed up more. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Look, you got the pocket square, too? You're killing uh, me. Wait, oh, I own, I don't even own this suit. Well, <laughs> looks like you do. Looks tailor-made. The little I, snazzy socks going thank on. Thank you. Oh, my lace. It is great to have you here. I'm a big fan myself, and uh, you've been doing comedy a long time. Yes, I have. You're, yeah, <laughs> I meant that in a good way. How do you think Breaking Bad's gonna end? Oh, I was... <laughs> you know what? I, I have no idea, because whenever, whenever I do the show, like, all they do is they just give me my little scene. Right. So I'm as big a fan as anybody, so it was such a thrill when I, I finally, yeah, I kept bugging my agent, trying to get on, and I finally got a little part on there. It was like getting sucked into the TV. And I remember when they had the clapper, you know, before they go in the action thing, I saw it said Breaking Bad, and I, was, I couldn't believe I was there. And uh, so I don't, I, I get little tidbits of information, but I, I have no idea. Right, but you're a smart guy. So, uh... Oh, he's pandering now, isn't he? I know, you like that? But yeah. you're brilliant. You're a genius. Uh, is there any clues while you're on set? Does Aaron Paul go home early any days? That's what I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> you know when they shoot the last episode? You know? Um, did you hear a director go, all right, we're stabbing Skyler now? Like, did you? No, no, they, 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 they keep it really, really under wraps. I know what you know. That's the, Really? Yeah. I don't even like, want, I wouldn't want to know either. Yeah. People are saying you're the next Louis C.K., not in a stylized sense, but in like I'm a... a balding redhead? Yeah. <laughs> Other than that. Other Ron than Howard, that. Louis C.K., yeah. Bill Burr. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch out for us balding redheads. We're, <laughs> we're coming on. Um, I think that's pretty much where the, that's where the comparison ends, as far as I'm concerned, because I am a huge fan of Louis, and I, when I learned from him, like, that guy is, he's the generation or so in front of me. He's also doing, like, one of the greatest shows on TV, writing, directing, acting in it, and all that, so... Yeah, he's put me to shame. That's what well, I'm you're saying. A, you're on. <laughs> you're on one of the greatest shows on TV right now. I do stand up in strip malls. That's what <laughs> I do. That's what I do. And occasionally I, I get some acting work, which that, is cool. You know, a lot of people know about that famous uh, that when you took it out on Philly because they were a bad crowd. Oh yeah. Your famous rant, yep. which you've since said you like Philadelphia, and that wasn't the issue. You were just giving people in Philly don't even remember. Uh, basically, if you ha haven't seen it, I was doing a show uh, for the Opie and Anthony. Uh, radio program, and they had this show called The Traveling Virus, and we were doing these, like, 10,000 seaters, and we went to Philly, um, and they're notorious for booing people, and they booed the first guy off stage, and I went on, like, three hours after that, so by the time I got up there, it was a complete shit show, and uh, I don't know. They started booing, and I snapped and decided I wasn't going to leave, and I just attacked everything that they loved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That> was, <laughs> and well... Yeah. And you know what? They, they're so twisted, they actually, not, they enjoyed it. And then when I came back to Philly, they do it so much, they don't even remember. They were like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, I've seen them boo. I saw them boo, uh, what was that, B Destiny's Child? I saw them boo. They, for what? Be because uh, it was a bad management move. They went... They sang at the NBA Finals. The 76ers were playing the Lakers. So I still remember it. They all came out, and they were wearing these, these sexy glitter, like, NBA outfits. And one had a glitter NBA one. Another had a glitter Philadelphia 76er one. And then the other one had a glitter Los Angeles Lakers one for some stupid reason. Oh. So it was clearly, they were like, we don't have a dog in the fight. We don't care. We're whoring ourselves out for the NBA. So they start singing the song, and this comic, Keith Robinson, who's from Philly, calls me up. He's like, you watching this? Because we knew it was coming. Yeah. I just remember they ended the song, however the ends, you know, and you boo delicious, it ends. And then they just go, and the whole crowd just goes, boo! <laughs> and, and for half a second, you saw, uh, who's the Jay-Z's wife there? She just, yeah, Beyonce. Yeah, she goes like, she just goes, <gasps> like that, and they immediately went to commercial. And I, and, I, I was, and I remember watching it, and I was like, yeah, I've been there. I <laughs> yeah. No, I was mad that they cut the commercial because I wanted to see if she would, did what I did. Like, you know what? You, <laughs> you are sort of crazy. You're the only small gun advocate I know. You're like yeah. the... You're, everyone's like, knowing you shouldn't have guns. Some people are like, everybody needs a gun. You're like, get a small gun yeah. only if the apocalypse happens. <laughs> no, you get, you get like a 22. It's perfect. Yeah. Which I think, I think you feel like 
the day the power goes out, you're going to have to shoot all your neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like you're under... I just, I just don't, I don't want to, like, die hiding in the cabinets in my kitchen. You know what I mean? I would like to take somebody with me. I'm not saying that I'm going to go hunt somebody down, right? But like, you know, and yeah. you guys might look at this like this is some crazy gun nut American, you know, but I'm on to you guys where there's something going on up here. I don't know what it is, but like, you know, you lose a hockey game and you like burn down your city like a, a riot. <laughs> It seems so trivial, but that's like, yeah, they always, what is, what is that thing where they say a riot is an expression of, uh, I'm too stupid to remember. How I, know, yeah, I, I, know. I know this. I know you're not nearly as happy as Michael Moore tried to make you out in that movie. Like, oh, no. oh, everybody's up here, you know, just having a good time and leaving their <laughs> doors unlocked. Nobody ever gets smashed oh. over the head with a bottle. It was such, oh, no, if that ah, just drove me nuts. If you guys play enough hockey up here, you get that violent tendency out. Oh, know? yeah. They make us try to play hockey. Yeah. And then based on this... I'm a huge fan of hockey. I love it. And I love that people don't get it down in the States. I love it. I love it. Why do they make... Why do they let them fight? I can't see the puck. It's like music to my yeah. ears. <laughs> it's like, good, yeah, get out of here. Do you, just get out of here. Let me, let, me, let me watch it in it's, peace. Do you remember when they lit up the puck for a few years on, on TV? News, yeah. That was you guys. Do you know, no, but the, but the NHL... Well, no, no, wait a minute, you, wait, wait a minute, minute. Not wait a minute. Though. Time out, no, time no. out, time out. The NHL is you guys, too. So all the owners had to agree with that. And you all had to be like, we gotta, we gotta, like, expand this thing. We thought we'd funnel money into Canada and keep it here, but you guys took it over, like you tend to do. But, well, I'm not gonna apologize no, for that. No, 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 you're big on the, yeah. I mean, that's just business, dude. You're acting like we came and knocked you on the head. You know what we're about. I, yeah, we... Wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. Fellow white person, <laughs> not native to this country. How did you guys get this up here? Did the Native Americans go, oh, well, we like these white guys. You can have all that <laughs> land. Jesus Christ. No, I, oh, I get it. Your shit smells like maple syrup up here. Is that what you're telling me? All right. Yeah. I'll go with it. We'll be back with more uh, with Bill Burr. <laughs> yeah? The, the, the kids are coming back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up next... More with Bill Burr, who raves about his love for fantasy hockey teams. I don't ever want to be that guy in the bar where the other team scores. And everybody's like, ah, oh. and you're like, oh, but he's on my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs>
I think, but I, I obviously saw like her with the pigtails and sticking her tongue out. I didn't think the dance she did was any more sexual than anything else that I saw throughout the years on that thing. I think what creeped people out was she was a child star, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden now you see her grown up and it's just undeniable at this point that someone's banged her. And I think that that <laughs> really kind of messed with people. Like she knew how to move. She, she's a woman now, and you know what? You guys need to get over it, all right? It's her body. I don't know. Like, back in the day, if you thought somebody sucked, you know, you just told your friends. You weren't able to, like, yeah. con contact them and try to weird them out while they're eating toast, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> so, no, no, that was, like a, that was like right when I thought I had built up a tough enough skin on stage. That was a new tough skin that you had to, to develop was when... You know, MySpace and all those things came out, and you were like, oh, this is a great way to connect with fans, <laughs> thinking it was going to be all, you know, you know all, all nice stuff. And then, all, then the first time it happens to you, you just, you're just not ready. You get, like, 25 or, great things, and then that one awful one, and you're just like, ugh. Because there's always a little bit of truth in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With your big, stupid head. You know how many times <laughs> you say you know? You're like, I know. I keep saying you know. I suck. <laughs> and it just starts messing with you. And then, but then you start thinking about that person. Like, well, I bet they do something, you know? They probably do something bad. Maybe they suck at driving or something. They, got, they have things to work on. When you see someone who hates you, you ever go to their Twitter feed and they just hated everything they did that day? They're like, Bill No, Brady but I will, I will attack him. I had one guy, he said, when are you coming to Dallas, you fucking ginger? And then I clicked on his picture and he was overweight. So <laughs> I just wrote back, I was there in April, you tub of shit. <laughs> He didn't write me back, and I felt good. I felt good knowing that I, I hurt him. <laughs> like, I, I'm really anti that whole somebody gets offended by a joke, and then you go and apologize. Because the second you apologize, then you make that person right, like you meant it maliciously. If you're being malicious, apologize. But if you're not being malicious, you should not apologize on, on you know. And I find that people who get offended in crowds are very selfish. They're selfish. They'll sit there for 40 minutes, and everything's funny. And then it comes to their neck of the woods, then all of a sudden you're making statements, you're not making jokes anymore. Right. Right? Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you know who gets offended by fat jokes? Fat people. Right? <laughs> they, you make fun of animals, the PETA people get mad. You make fun of gays, the gay people will get mad. Not saying alls, but they, they do, right? Yeah. But, like, like, the PETA people never stick up for homophobia. Right. You know, the Asian group doesn't come at you when you're, you're whatever, making fun of fatties, you know? <laughs> yeah. So... I mean, and I'm sitting here, they have, like, kick a ginger day. People are telling us we're dying out. I mean, who's sticking up for me? So, yeah. you know, go f*** yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fantasy hockey draft. Uh, who do I pick first? I don't play fantasy. I play, I'll, I'll if you want to play pickup hockey, I'll do that. But I, I don't ever want to be that guy in the bar where the other team scores. And everybody's like, ah, oh. and you're like, oh, but he's on my fantasy team. <laughs> I have this team. <laughs> Yeah. In my biggest fantasy, this would be the team. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the worst thing. I, yeah. I like to know when the stats, because I used to collect football cards and stuff like that when I was a kid, and I knew where they went to school, and, you know, and I, I like that aspect of it, but uh, I just couldn't go over all my friends' house and have a mock draft. Like, I stopped playing Cowboys and Indians when I was a kid. Like, it's right. like you know, once you're an adult, you should... Yeah. Just either go out and do it or, you know. Which, yeah, you actually play. Watch somebody do it. You play hockey, though. Yeah, Pick up play. hockey, yep. but I only started in 2010. I'm, like, upper horrible. That's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm at. But I play with a lot of guys that are better than me, so it's, it's been a good thing. I, def, I, I can skate pretty good, but my, my, I, I equate my, my stick handling to, like, texting while driving. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of this, so it gets, uh, puck gets taken away from me real quick. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, check out Bill Burr, BillBurr.com, and listen to his podcast. Bill Burr, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. JFL 42. The festival is moving along so fast, and one of the best of the new generations of comedians, John Mulaney, is in town. He'll be joining us on Thursday's show. Yeah. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, our guests are opinionated actress comedian Janine Garofalo, the hilarious Andy Kindler, a match game panelist, and Juice Pig, or was he Corky? Sean Cullen will be here. Yes. 
for Comedy and Jam All 42. I'm Graham Tindon. Good night. No, it's unreal. I'm really fucking annoyed how white women have the fucking balls to throw my white privilege in my face. You know? <laughs> Sort of separate themselves from these white males with their white male privilege. It's like, bitch, you're sitting in the jacuzzi with me. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, put your fucking whining. All right, if you fucking, if you live in some honey boo boo lifestyle on the Appalachian Trail, you know, your uncle just banged you in the dirt. All right, I can listen to you. Now, one of my fantasies is I want to drive by like a woman's rally and just say the most sexist shit I can think of just to watch them lose their minds. And I'll just drive by real slow and be like, yeah, why don't you get back in the kitchen where you belong? <laughs> just to look in the rearview mirror watching them flipping out in the road, spinning around like Leatherface at the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, Look, I'm sure that there's some uh, feminists in the crowd right now not appreciating this joke, feeling triggered, feeling like they need to fucking put out a hashtag or some shit and be brave and speak out. You know what? You're full of shit. You are. All, all those feminists are full of shit because I'm going to tell you right now, someday... Someday, there's gonna be, there's gonna be the first woman president, all right? Which means, which means, you don't even know what her, you don't even know what her fucking platform is, and you automatically cheer. <laughs> uh, uh, it's got the same genitalia! Uh. <laughs> fucking, I'm telling you, they're not smart people. Feminists, they, they're not as smart as they're coming off, I'm telling you. Someday, there's gonna be... By the way, this is going to be my last show ever, by the time this fucking thing comes out. Someday, there's going to be the first female president, which means there's going to be the first male first lady, right? And you wait, you fucking wait, the first time that dude opens these feminists, they're all going to be, you shut the fuck up! You shut the fuck up! It is her time now! It is her time! She was elected, not you! Go pick out some plates, bitch! You are the first lady. <laughs> He's gonna get treated like Tom Arnold when he was with Roseanne. <laughs> Secret service name will be like appendix or doesn't matter. <laughs> not worthy of protecting, just entered the Oval Office, not worthy of protecting. My girl's actually, she's really like religious. She goes to church every week and I never go and it freaks her out. She's like, why don't you go to church? You don't believe in God and heaven and hell and all that stuff? Why, why don't you go? And it's not because I don't believe in a higher power. I definitely do. My thing is when I go to church, I can't get past the fact that I'm just listening to some fucking guy. You ever think of that shit when you go in there? That's just some dude. And people are like, no, that's a special guy. No, it isn't. It isn't. He didn't, he didn't like levitate down from the ceiling like ah, this white light around him why would you listen to another human being tell you where you're gonna go when you die it's just like dude have you ever been dead no great so wouldn't it be safe to assume that you wouldn't have the slightest fucking idea what you're talking about yeah you're making it up you're making the shit up you're not fooling me with the robes and the candles. Speaking in old English. He said it under you is. Shut the fuck up. You don't talk like that. You're just some guy. Your name's Jerry. You played soccer. You got your ass kicked in gym class. And now you're doing this. Every study they've ever done to determine who's smarter, men or women, every study comes back and says women are smarter. Every fucking one. Ladies, you shouldn't be applauding that. You know I'm an asshole. You know this isn't gonna end well. Did he say I'm pretty? Oh, oh my God. Get out of the relationship. 
<laughs> if every study says that you're smarter, okay? The question you should be asking yourself was, we're so goddamn smart, how are we in the situation we're in? Well, <laughs> you're in the situation you, you're in not because of guys like me. As much as you want to blame me, I'm, yeah, you know, ladies, you can't tell me you never drove by a sports bar on a football Sunday and looked at the humanity in there. All those dumb guys with their big beer bellies bumping chest. Hey, it's on my fantasy team. I'm top, man. You want to get some more mozzarella sticks, man? As a woman with your bigger brain, you never looked in there and thought to yourself, I'm fucking losing to that. I'm losing to that. No means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no. All right, but no, stop it. What are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad. Stop it. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me. So I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people. Right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you just sit there like, she didn't fucking say it like that! She didn't say it like that! This girl one time, she was like really into like women's issues. So we used to always have these dumbass arguments. So one time she came up to me, she goes, okay, explain this to me, Bill. Why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job, huh? Hmm? Hmm? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. I get the dollar more now. Well, think about it. If there's a house fire, it's always women and children first. I got to stand there with like the back of my shirt on fire going, let's go people, let's go, let's go. So that's how I look at it. No, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. That if something fucked up happens, either I can't leave or I gotta like get in the way of it to give you a head start, like rabbit dog, run honey, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You hear a bump in the night, I gotta go check it out, like yes, he does have a knife. Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for first? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? Bullets hurt me too, why the fuck do I gotta stay in the vault? No, that's my point, man. Where are all the feminists in those situations? You know what I mean? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. That's a, that's a guarantee. You could take the most hardcore feminist, some chick right in your face, like, he's chauvinistic, son of a bitch. Little short, little haircut, the whole nine yards, right? Second those flames break out, she's gonna twist those little hairs into pigtails. No, I'm just a girl. I wanna go play jump rope. And leave you standing in a burning house like you're not flammable. You know, but I'm not, I'm not a dick, though. I'm not, I'm not saying I think a woman should make a dollar less an hour to do the same job. All I'm saying is if you're going to make what I make when the boat sinks, you better be standing right there next to me, listening to that guy play the cello. Then you get to corner office. I screwed up my country is right now. Do you, you, know, you know Brian Cranston, right? That dude did a movie. He played a quadriplegic. And people gave him shit. <laughs> Be like, why is there an able-bodied person playing a quadriplegic? It's like, it's because it's called acting, you dumb fuck. See, if he was a quadriplegic playing a quadriplegic, that's not acting. That's just fucking laying there saying shit that someone else wrote. So tell us, what, what did you do to prepare for the role? Well, I dove headfirst into the shallow end of a pool when I was 23. 
I feel like I've been preparing for this role for my whole life. Right, what is up next for you? Oh, uh, well, they're gonna do a reboot of Top Gun. Uh, I'm gonna fly it with my plug. And uh, the co-pilot's gonna be transgendered. So everybody will be happy. She won't die. Her discarded dick will block her head from the canopy. There'll be a gender-neutral bathroom on the plane. How fucking dumb is that? That's literally like watching a movie. Why didn't you have a murderer play a murderer? And how come the guy he shot? I saw him in another movie. I mean, what the fuck is going on? Actually, Nerd Jesus died in the last year, right? Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died, right? I know, I know, a lot of nerds here tonight. I know, you're sad. I didn't get it. I didn't get the big deal they made about that guy. When he died, they were like, he changed the world. That was insane. He changed the world. The world was one way, and then Steve Jobs came, and it was another. What did he do? Somebody, for the love of God, what the fuck did that guy do? What did he do? He told other people what to invent? I want my entire music collection in that phone. Get on it! Right? And then these poor, nameless, faceless scientists gotta go in a back room and figure it out. How the fuck are we gonna get all of this into this? I mean, what year does this guy think this is? This is crazy. This is like Buck Rogers. Dude, my kid has a birthday in like 11 months. Steve Jobs just walking by. I don't hear any thinking going on in there. Just strutting around the office, eating some pretentious fruit like a pear, right? Just throwing out ideas. There's another one. There's another one I just came up with on the way to work. I was reading a magazine the other day, turning pages, you know? I like to turn pages on a screen that aren't even there. Yeah, wrap your fucking heads around that, guys. See you in eight years. Where you going, Michael? Big, little, big, little, get on it! Right? And all these people slave away to make his vision come true. And then they have the big nerd fest, right? Down there, Comic-Con, and all their nerd mecca. They are all showing up with their acne and their Hulk shirts, limping into the arena, right? Does Steve Jobs go out with a whole chorus line of scientists? No, he goes out there by himself. Sneakers and no belt, like it was no biggie, right? <laughs> like he's, like he's Tesla, <laughs> tapping into the atmosphere. I know, this is always uncomfortable. I know, you bought into it, right? That whole advertising, the way they aligned themselves with some of the greatest people of all time. Jesus, Gandhi, me! <laughs> Remember that? Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, this guy! How the fuck was that dude like any of them? Gandhi didn't have a sweatshop. Nah, he didn't have people leaping to their deaths only to get, catch a net and get ricocheted back through the window to have to put together yet another iPad. John Lennon didn't have children in his basement pressing those fucking albums. I know, I know. New phone can't fit the old charger. This is your hero? This is the guy? This is what all the silence is about? New phone can't fit the old charger, so then you gotta throw it out, ends up in the ocean around some octopus's neck. Do you realize how much sea life is ecstatic that that man is no longer walking the earth? <laughs> That's where it all ends up, you know. Doesn't go in a landfill, ends up in the ocean. You realize that? I hate people who say I don't pollute. I don't pollute. Yeah, you do. You use shit and you throw it out. What, you think because you put it in like a basket, it just poof, disappears? <laughs> Everything you ever used is somewhere. You ever think about that? Remember that flannel shirt you bought back in the day when you got into Pearl Jam? <laughs> That's out there somewhere. Probably on some porpoise's face, tr trying to get it off. <laughs> Stupid little flippers. All the fads. You remember rollerblading? Remember that? Everybody had them. 
We set up cones, we did little tricks, right? One little homophobic joke killed that entire fad. What's the hardest thing about rollerblading? Yeah, telling your parents you're gay. Full grown adults, dude, I'm not gay. I don't have the cooties. These mean I suck dick. And they just threw them out. They end up in the ocean. They're made out of plastic. They can't biodegrade. They just break down to little cubes. Fish are breathing them in. Six months later, you're going out, you're getting sushi. You think you're being healthy. You're eating your old rollerblades. I think I'll be a good Jesus died in the last year, right? Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died, right? I know, I know, a lot of nerds here tonight. I know, you're sad. I didn't get it. I didn't get the big deal they made about that guy. When he died, they were like, he changed the world. That was insane. He changed the world. The world was one way, and then Steve Jobs came, and it was another. What did he do? Somebody, for the love of God, what the fuck did that guy do? What did he do? He told other people what to invent? I want my entire music collection in that phone. Get on it! Right? And then these poor, nameless, faceless scientists gotta go in a back room and figure it out. How the fuck are we gonna get all of this into this? I mean, what year does this guy think this is? This is crazy. This is like Buck Rogers. Dude, my kid has a birthday in like 11 months. Steve Jobs just walking by. I don't hear any thinking going on in there. Just strutting around the office, eating some pretentious fruit like a pear, right? Just throwing out ideas. There's another one. There's another one I just came up with on the way to work. I was reading a magazine the other day, turning pages, you know? I like to turn pages on a screen that aren't even there. Yeah, wrap your fucking heads around that, guys. See you in eight years. Where you going, Michael? Big, little, big, little, get on it! Right? Then all these people slave away to make his vision come true. And then they have the big nerd fest, right? Down there, Comic-Con, and all their nerd mecca. They are all showing up with their acne and their Hulk shirts, limping into the arena, right? Does Steve Jobs go out with a whole chorus line of scientists? No, he goes out there by himself. Sneakers and no belt like it was no biggie, right? <laughs> Like he's, like he's Tesla, <laughs> tapping into the atmosphere. I know, this is always uncomfortable. I know, you bought into it, right? That whole advertising, the way they aligned themselves with some of the greatest people of all time. Jesus, Gandhi, me. <laughs> Remember that? Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, this guy. <laughs> How the fuck was that dude like any of them? <laughs> Gandhi didn't have a sweatshop. Nah, he didn't have people leaping to their deaths only to get, catch a net and get ricocheted back through the window to have to put together yet another iPad. John Lennon didn't have children in his basement pressing those fucking albums. I know, I know. New phone can't fit the old charger. This is your hero? This is the guy? This is what all the silence is about. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But I think white women started it. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. The fucking worst. It's all they do is bitch mode and complain. I had no idea how difficult it was to be a white woman in the United States of America. Evidently, it's, it's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always bitching. Do you have any idea what it's like to be me? Well, I imagine it would be slightly less awesome than my life. <laughs> what happened to you today, sweetheart? Huh? Did they not chill your rosé? You know? Was the trolley not running down at the mall? What happened? No, it's unreal. I'm really fucking annoyed how white women have the fucking balls to throw my white privilege in my face, you know? 
sort of separate themselves from these white males with their white male privilege. It's like, bitch, you're sitting in the jacuzzi with me. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, put your fucking whining. Look, right out of the gate, all right? If you're fucking, if you're living some honey boo boo lifestyle on the Appalachian Trail, you know, your uncle just banged you in the dirt. All right, I can listen to you. No, one of my fantasies is I want to drive by like a woman's rally and just say the most sexist shit I can think of just to watch them lose their minds. And I'll just drive by real slow and be like, yeah, why don't you get back in the kitchen where you belong? <laughs> just to look in the rearview mirror watching them fly, flipping out in the road, spinning around like Leatherface at the end of Texas Chain. Saw a massacre like <laughs> Yeah. No, it's a very uh I don't know. Times are changing, I guess. I don't know. It's fucking nuts. The people are so scared now. You now have you have the male feminist. Like where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Last couple years. I'm a male feminist. Uh, I've always championed women. No, you haven't. You haven't. This shit came out and you're fucking scared. You did something. You grabbed some fucking titties. What the fuck did you do that you have to overcorrect that fucking hard? What kind of a man who still has his balls is walking around saying that he's a male feminist? Uh, I'm a male feminist. I totally see the way you see the fucking world. It's, it's impossible as a man who was raised right. <laughs> A feminist. You can't do it. You're a man. Look, you, you, you can agree with it. You can empathize, sympathy. You can do all of that shit. But you can't be it any more than I can stand here and just be like, I'm a Black Panther. Fight the power. And then I walk out the door, a blue-eyed white dude, and I get to live that fucking life, right? I don't know. I don't know, ladies. I don't buy it. Maybe, maybe you do. I don't. Anytime I hear a guy say I'm a male feminist, I always just think that is the most pathetic, limp dick way ever to try and get some pussy, right? Like that's literally, that is literally the fucking game you had when you were on a first date when you were 16, you were all nervous and your whole game plan was just agree with her, maybe she'll touch it. <laughs> so what are your favorite bands? I like whatever you like. Will you touch it now? Did I do it right?
sir, never passed the fucking eighth grade. What brilliant shit are you gonna fucking tell me, huh? Go back to the dock and go unload some shit. You fucking warehouse working, weed smoking, fucking disappointment to your mother. Seven minutes left. Seven motherfucking minutes left. And I'll do it all fucking seven.
here with a fucking gun, right? That's what I do. I come up with a fucking gun, hollow tip bullets, and I just start fucking shooting people, okay? And everybody's chained in their fucking chairs. I just blow all your fucking brains out, like just, just one after another, just fucking one. two to the back of the head, never ending, coming out like a fucking Mexican with those two fucking crosses of bullets. I just blow all your fucking brains out. I would really enjoy. That's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't even uh, want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, compromise your privacy. Yeah, by all means, keep talking about it. Is there anybody who can cut this out? <laughs> I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, Off the air. Off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right. Jeez. I love how surprised he is. Jeez. Well, there's you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people out okay, there. Yeah. Whew. All right. I don't know why that took out so <laughs> flat. You got Come one on. question to ask Don Rickles. Uh, who killed Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> you think he knows? Well, yeah. Well, he hung out with Sinatra. I figure <laughs> six degrees of separation. He probably knows. Yeah, why not? Where's well, Jimmy Hoffa? I'd ask him one of those. You know, you know he, you, you ask him three mob questions. One of them he's got the answer to. You don't have any kids. No, I don't. And I don't like the way you said that. Like, this is very... <laughs> you don't have any kids. No, I don't have any kids. I'm going to adopt. <laughs> That's nice. I'm going to rescue a couple of the children that work till four in the morning <laughs> to put this. They make them catch it when it rains. <laughs> okay? And you have to stand out there <laughs> and, until it's full. And if it doesn't rain that day, you actually get beaten. And they dock your pay because you didn't do the rain dance right. And then we sit here and we drink this shit. And we wonder why China hates us. When did you start shaving your head? It looks good. Uh, when did I start shaving? Well, I shaved it later on my first, my first special. I had it shaved. Really? I didn't. Yeah. When I saw you in New York I'm for glad, the Patrice I'm glad thing. you liked it. I, I see I you like losing the roof there in the back. Yeah, You'll be right bit, there with me. Bit. I'll be we'll, do, we'll do a buddy cop show. Exactly. All right? Two balding old guys. <laughs> exactly. Going after some hairy criminal. Where did you play the cop? On uh, Breaking I Bad. A Breaking like Bad. Things. I wasn't Breaking a cop in Breaking Bad. I had my head shaved on my first special. You didn't do your research. You were Where? so busy worried about this matching this, and now Where look were you at a you. Cop? Huh? What You're show were you to a get cop? Sweat on your upper know, lip. Because I'm nervous. Because I'm fucking this up. Are you from Southie? No. That's Wait. that's a Goodwill Hunting question that I've answered <laughs> for 15 years. Ever since that movie came out. Do you, are you good at math? Do you like apples? Oh, uh, from flannel underscore toilet semicolon. Um. When is do you think Moonshine will make it, make their big comeback? Well, Moonshoes. I, I can't read, by the way. When is do you think Moonshoes will make their big comeback? What are, what are Moonshoes? It's like trampolines on your feet. You see, like you're bouncing around like you're on the moon. I didn't know that they ever had them. <laughs> <laughs> Flannel toilet? I had no idea. Uh, so, but if I had to guess, when, when did they come up? <laughs> I, I yeah. Don't know. Does anybody fucking know? Jesus Christ. Can women be funny? Will you guys just fucking grow up and just sit down and write your own horse shit and come up with it? Start your own fucking show. Have your own award show. Quit waiting around for other people to do shit for you. That's the fucking problem. If you guys had your own big club and I was standing outside of it, you'd never fucking let me in. I'd start my own shit. You guys got to start your own shit. You got brains in there, right? Uh, I, yes, absolutely. So write your own shit and quit your fucking whining. We're all eating a giant shit sandwich out here. Nobody cares. I don't care. Absolutely, but I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a web person. The fuck up. Uh, I, it has no makes no yeah. difference whether you got a dick or a twat. All right? <laughs> Just do what the fuck you want to do and hopefully people respond to it. 
but this fucking horseshit of quotas and all of this crap become undeniable. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are going to notice regardless of what you have between your legs. Uh, I don't know how to say it. How would you say that? Obia man. Obia man. Oh, I see. O-B-E-A-H. God, I'm <laughs> Um, <clears throat> what is your favorite Pokemon and Pixar? I don't know. Too old for that. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. That's that creepy little yellow thing. Those eyes. <laughs> This is Southside Steve, and this is Southside Steve TV, and this is Bill Burr. That's your question? I'm just saying who you are. Oh, yeah, all right. I don't like you creep me out with that big microphone and that country western shirt. Oh, no, this isn't country western. It's like it's hip now to oh, wear this. Okay. This is my nightclub look. Yeah, okay. come on. All right. <laughs> you're, you're uh, what is this? Rock 100.5. This is the worst interview I've ever done. And he's wearing Stetson cologne or something. It's just really over, <laughs> overpowering. How you doing? You know what he looks like? He looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> oh, the background guy behind the, uh, the, the big kingpin. Why don't you handle this? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of hockey. I love it. And I love that people don't get it down in the states i love it i love it. why do they make why do they let them fight i can't see the puck it's like music to my ears <laughs> it's like good yeah get out of here do you, just get out of here let me let me let me watch it in peace good. do you remember when they lit up the puck for a few years on, on tv News, yeah that was you guys do you know no but the but the nhl well no no wait a minute wait, wait a minute, minute. Wait, wait a minute though. time out no, time no. out time out the NHL is you guys too, so all the owners had to agree with that, and you all had to be like, "We gotta, we gotta like expand this thing." We thought we'd funnel money into Canada and keep it here, but you guys took it over, like you tend to do. But well, I'm not going to apologize no, for that. No, no, no. You're big on the yeah. I mean, that's just business, dude. You're acting like we came and knocked you on the head. You know what we're about? I yeah. We wait. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. Wait a second, <laughs> fellow white person, <laughs> not native. To this country? How did you guys get this up here? Did the Native Americans go, oh, well, we like these white guys. You can have all that land. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I, oh, I get it. Your shit smells like maple syrup up here. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? All right. Yeah. I'll go with it. You know, I was reading a little bit about you, and it says that you have a tendency to kind of go with your first thought. Yeah. Because reading makes you sleepy. That's right. <laughs> My first thought is this is the best week to be here, the week before the Super Bowl. That is so true. Before all the whores fly in, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. But just want to get out. Wow. <laughs> just want to get out of here before that. What is true? This is like the Oscars uh, oh. for prostitutes. Okay, all right. This well, entire week. Let's remember, we're G-rated here. <laughs> is, is there any specific preparing that you do when you do an urban room, or you just do your regular material? Yeah, I rent car wash, <laughs> and I watch... <laughs> No, it was, uh... <laughs> soul glow. <laughs> yeah, soul glow, I watch that. I uh, make sure I get buy a couple of Red Fox albums. I start talking like this when I get on, when I get on the stage. You're at your girlfriend's sister's house. The sister just had a baby. Cute little baby, you know, three, four months old, you know, when they're just a blob of squishiness. Very cute. Right. Comes over, hands you the baby. You're sitting in the living room on the armchair. You're holding the baby up. Baby keeps putting his little feet right on your crotch. <laughs> Wiggling around the soft little feet. Pushing, stomping like grapes. Right. You start to feel a natural physiological response to that. Yet for some reason I don't move the baby. I just let it continue to step on my junk. In this situation, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So now. Makes total sense. In talk your way out of it, everything makes sense. So now you're, you're at, I'm going to call three quarters mask. The sister comes over to grab the baby because it started to cry. I'm wearing sweatpants. You got sweatpants on. Sister picks up the baby, the mother, your girl, her, the sister, all look down. They see it. Talk your way out of it. I mean, what was I supposed to do? It was stepping on my dick. So I supposed to throw it on the floor? I mean, it's a fucking baby. It's over here like it's trying to make wine on my cock and balls, you know? You fucking hold it. See what happens to your dick. Happy holidays. <laughs> there you go, I'm out of it. 
laughing. You just, <laughs> you just, you just go with honesty. <laughs> this game's easy. So your Christian background is is part of the the show. Or yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know, as far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? So, I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good Lord. So that, did you that, feel that, you were being some... disrespectful or just you, you were just having fun with some of the crucifixes and stuff like that? I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. A couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically, they just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld. After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think you know I want to. You know what I'm to. talking about? It's a morning show. I understand. Like, that. Thank you I came on. Positive. That kid positive. was missed the graduation, and then, then the, it was a feel-good story. It was a feel-good, and we want to leave. If you want to feel good about America, you watch the morning shows. You don't watch this, you know. And we watch were joking earlier. If that kid's story about the graduation was late night, that would have been a whole different story. What do you think? He's still missing. We can't <laughs> find him. All we found was his hat. But you watch in the morning. It's great. It all worked out. He got his own personal graduation. Like, I was in such a great mood. Look how <laughs> yellow this couch is. It's like the sun. I don't think I would, you are a major conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist, though. Yes. Conspiracy theory has gotten a bad name where now it's, it's, it's become synonymous with, like, moronic thought. Like, if you're into conspiracy theory, if you think, like, the bankers need to be stopped, then you also think the moon is made out of cheese. <laughs> and you think that there's shape shift shifters and, like, lizard people. You know, they just try to knock it down. It's like, this country started with a conspiracy. That's how it came. We won, <laughs> so they're considered heroes and rebels, you yeah. know, uh, whatever, what Re revolutionaries, but yeah. if they lost, they would be hanged for, conspi for yeah. conspiring. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like it spontaneously happened. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, everybody just picked up a gun and started shooting at the British. You know, they sat around. <laughs> they, said they planned they it out. They planned it out. Yeah. I'm kind of getting tired of these people. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. When you said we win, I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African American thing? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, what's going on, you old? What's going on, you old sons of bitches? Turn up your hearing aid. You're watching the old fart channel. What do you think about uh, population, world population? It's completely out of control. Well, I, what about I, I, be fruitful and multiply? I think we did that. I think we, <laughs> I think we achieved that goal, and it's time to move on to something else. I mean, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Like, uh, I think we need to kind of curb the babies for a minute, <laughs> let some older people die off, you know, and uh, I don't know. I think like a good number is about, I don't know, about 500 million. Oh, really? Six, let the oceans come back. Yeah, but how do you choose? Give people some space But you're, again. Not, you're, you're not talking about death panels, you're just talking about attrition. Yeah, just, you know. Birth control then. Birth control, old people die, somebody falls off a ladder. Right. You gradually, you know, you taper it off. Here's you? what I think, maybe get rid of seat belts. I mean, there's some things we could do to move things no, just along. get rid of medicine. Get rid of medicine. Yeah, all these diseases we're trying to stop is nature actually keeping us in check, but we can contemplate, like, love and, and uh, uh, loss and our own mortality. So we think these diseases are bad. They are bad, they, but animals get them all the time, and it keeps them in check, and we stopped get, all of that get shit. Get rid of medicine. Get rid of medicine. Get rid live of Live a hospital. healthy life. Eat well. Get rid of Dude, pesticides. if it wasn't for modern medicine, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now. I should not be here. <laughs> I had a ruptured appendix in 1980. I should have died under a stack of wool blankets <laughs> on a prairie, but I did. Eat a green jello? Yeah, and no, here I am. Just walking around, taking up space, driving a car, <laughs> polluting a river in my own way, adding my hole to the ozone layer. I mean. Let's keep the comedy rolling all the way from the United States of America, Mr. Bill Burr. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. How's it going? Great. It's nice to be here. I'm at that age where everybody I know is getting married. Let me ask you a question. Why the hell do people keep getting married? You know what I mean? Isn't anybody looking at the stats? You know what I mean? Three out of four marriages go right down the shitter, right? If you were going skydiving and they told you three out of four parachutes weren't gonna open, 
and be like, yo, fuck that, I'm not going. No, like, I don't like those odds. I have a 75% chance of splatting on the ground. But there's something about getting married. People just have to do it, right? They're just like, is this the line to lose half my shit? Awesome. <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love women. I'm just not compatible with them. <laughs> no, they got too much energy for me. You notice that's it. They always have to be doing something. You know, like they can't like take a day off, you know? You can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. They just like see that open day. They're like, oh my God, let's fucking fill it up with shit. <laughs> They just come at you with like one horrible idea after another. They have the worst ideas. They do, you ever get to this one, they'll be like, you wanna go to brunch? You wanna go to brunch on Sunday? And inside you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that, you gotta keep her happy, right? So what do you do, you agree? Yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $52 for eggs? Now you're thinking. <laughs> then we can sit around and listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs, you know, like, is that pesto? <laughs> is that pesto in your omelet? <laughs> oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. <laughs> I thought it was pesto. I was dating this girl recently. She was like really into like women's issues. You know, because women always go on TV, you know, they say all they want is be treated exactly like guys. But if you listen to them, they don't. All they want is the good shit of being a guy. They're cherry picking. They look at a guy's life like it's like a buffet, right? Like you just can start picking out stuff like same amount an hour. We'll take some of that. Pay for the movie. Fuck that. You can keep that one. I don't like that one. This is nice. That's yucky. That's icky. Hey, come on, people. You can't choose. This girl gives me shit. She goes, well, why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. <laughs> That's why I get the dollar more an hour. Come on, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. You hear a bump in the night, I gotta go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. <laughs> Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? You think I want to stay in the vault? Those 20 other sweaty guys sharing a bag of peanuts, you know? Praying to God I'm not the hostage who gets dragged out by the psycho with a gun to my head as he's asking the cops for a helicopter, which I know he's not gonna get, right? I know he's not getting the helicopter. So now I gotta make idle conversation with the 38 to my head going, dude, go for a rent a car. I think you should go for the rent a car. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Where are all those feminists then? You can't find them. <laughs> there are no feminists in a house fire. You can take the most hardcore feminists, you know, some chick right in your face, you chauvinistic son of a bitch, you know, a little short, little haircut, you know. Second those flames break out, she'll twist those little hairs into pigtails. Oh, I'm just a girl. I want to go play jump rope. No, no that's why I hated that movie, the, uh, the Titanic. Every girl I meet thinks that movie's romantic. It's irritating. I think, that was really romantic, don't you think? It's like, no! It's a fucking horror film. And they're always like, why? I'm like, because all the guys die. <laughs> See, you're watching it, trying to relate, going, who would I be? You'd be that chick floating away in the big piece of luggage, right? I'm watching it going, who would I be? I'd be that dude when, like, the boat breaks in half, that dude who, like, falls straight down and bangs off the shit and goes in the water. <laughs> That's who I'd be. I'd be wearing a tuxedo, not because I wanted to, but you wanted to dress up that night, right? <laughs> I'd be falling. I'd be falling the whole way down going, I should have fucked that chicken first class. <laughs> Alright, listen, I'm out of time. You guys are a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. You're very funny, Bill Burr. No. I've actually, you wouldn't know it from all the ignorant shit I've said so far, but I, I am a changed person, believe it. <laughs> I am. I had an experience uh, earlier this year. 
This is all true. Now you don't think so? Some guy just yelled bullshit. Are you saying bullshit, sir, because you don't believe me or because you don't want me to leave? Is that what it is? The little angry circle that you're in? Don't be going getting happy now. Don't be going getting soft on me. Don't start hugging people and loving yourself and crying when you see something cute. Hang on to it. Lash out at people. Reach for your pistol under the seat. Do it. No, I, uh, I took mushrooms back in February for the first time ever. And, uh, <laughs> this is the perfect state to tell this story. You guys should literally have... You should have mushrooms on your fucking license plate. All right, so here's the deal. I never fucked with anything like that. I was always a booze guy. I was a booze guy, you know. I, yeah, you know. I like, all right, relax, everybody. I always get, like... I always get nervous when I get white guys going like, yeah, all right, woo, ah, build the wall. All right, all right, all right. I'm just, I'm fucking around. Relax. It's frightening to listen to, but that's what being a guy is. You're not allowed to have emotions. So that's all of that shit comes out when you drink. Ah, ah, ah. Do something dumb so I don't feel stupid. Ah, ah, ah. So, yeah, I was always like a booze guy. So, like, I never fucked with, like, psychedelics or whatever. So I think, you know, it was just one of those deals. I was out in the desert, man. And I was like, all right. I got somebody watching my kids. Everything's fine. I'm in my 50s. If I got to do it now or I'm never going to do it, right? So this person who might, may, or, may or may not have been my opening act tonight goes, all right, man. <laughs> um, he's a good man. He's a good man. He says to me, he goes, all right. He goes, okay, just, you know, just take like, you know, you know, you know it's, always, it's always just like, all right. So like how fucked up do you want to get, all right? <laughs> And there's always like a square, and it's like, okay, don't eat the whole square. Just like bite one corner, lick the other one, and then rub the other one and let it absorb in your face or whatever. So I'm like, all right. He goes, how far into it do you want to go? I go, I just want to trip a little bit. Nothing fucking crazy. So he goes, fine. So I ate just a little bit. So I get a little nauseous or whatever. At first it feels like I ate some weed, but then all of a sudden, like, I notice shit that's not alive looks like it's breathing, right? <laughs> like the refrigerator looked like it just... Did a lap around the house, it's kind of... <laughs> Nothing threatening, you know? It's just like, you know, it needed it, you know? <sighs> TV started getting bigger. It's looking like it's going to fall on me, all right? And I was doing fine. I was fine. I was like, I know that TV's not getting bigger. And if it is, I don't give a shit. Go ahead. Spill that pixelation all over me. I don't give a fuck. I know I'm tripping. I'm having fun. I'm giggling. I'm laughing at shit, I'm putting things together, right? And everything is fucking great. And all of a sudden, about an hour in, all of a sudden, this profound sense of loneliness and not feeling loved just washed over me. Yeah, and I was just like, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. This is why I didn't do it. I knew I had too many demons. I knew I wasn't going to see God and fucking unicorns and slide down the rainbow and, and roll around in the grass. I fucking knew Satan was coming up. There was going to be a guy with a knife and shit. I was just like, all right, go ahead. Drag me into the abyss. Let me see how fucked up I am. And this feeling, it just, it just enveloped me. And I don't even know how to describe it. It wasn't even a feeling. It just was. It just was. So I'm freaking the fuck. I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? I can't get out of it, dude. Like, I, I could walk a hundred fucking mi million miles. I can't walk out of it. It just was. So I didn't want them. Everybody else is like tripping. I don't want to fucking ruin their trip. So I'm just like, all right, dude. I'm just going to go to the bedroom, you know. <laughs> and, oh, look at the refrigerator. Refrigerator. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just feeling a little nauseous. <laughs> Just playing it off, right? Going in the fucking bedroom. And I'm just laying down in the bedroom like, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck? And every time, every time I fe thought I felt the bottom, it would just, just further into the bed. Further into the bed. Further into the bed. So about a half hour later, my wife comes in. She's like, hey, how you doing? Typical guy. Good. I'm doing good. <laughs> 
Don't cry. Don't cry. So she's laying next to me. I'm feeling a little nauseous. This is a little bit much for me. And she's just laying down. And I'm just feeling this feeling. Not feeling loved. Profound sense of loneliness. So now I'm just looking at my wife. My brain just starts going like, oh, fuck. Did I marry the wrong person? Why am I looking at... I know that seems fucked up, but once you're married long enough, even not on mushrooms, you have that thought every fucking six weeks. You just do. Something happens where you just look at the side of their head and just do the math and just think, why did I ever talk to you? Why didn't... I could have just walked by. I didn't have to say hello. We had no relationship. We, we, we were nothing. Why did I ever talk? What, what, what would happen if I just never talked to you? Every six weeks, you think that's a healthy relationship. That means you still held on to a part of yourself. That even though you love this person, you know, you still, you, you know, you still want to fucking run around like a Mustang a little bit, right? So anyways, I'm like, okay. I, I was like, dude, that was freaking me out even more to think of my wife and, 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 and be feeling that. So I was like, fuck, fuck, I need to pull the ripcord. I got to get out of this. I got to get out of this fucking, it's like a giant beanbag. I couldn't get out of it, right? So I was like, oh, fuck. Think about your kids. Think about your kids. Now, my kids, I love my kids. And I know they love me. There is no fucking question. And I started thinking about my kids. And I still felt that feeling. And I was like, all right. What the fuck is this? Because I know that's bullshit. And I just sort of laid there. And I relaxed. And I went, oh, fuck. I know what this is. <laughs> this is how I felt growing up. Yeah, this is what the 70s and 80s were like. Both your parents work, you got a set of keys to the house when you were three. Ah, get outside, get the fuck out of my face, right? It was fucking nuts. Yeah, I grew up in a very, like, angry time, you know? Like, you were afraid of your dad, your dad's dad. I talked about this shit before, but I'm still working through it, so just bear with me. You just were fucking, yeah. Like, I love seeing kids nowadays loving their dad. Like, dad, what's Go play, Dad. Let's go ride bikes, Dad. Dad. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was like, Dad. Dad. Fuck. Dad. Fuck. Run. Open a window. Mom. What did you see in that? <laughs> fucking lunatic. Right? Yeah. It was absolute fucking lunacy. And, and not just my house. I love my parents, but it was just the time. Like everybody was fucking crazy. You were afraid and people could put their hands on you and other people's dads could hit you. And then you come home, oh, what the fuck did you do? I'll fucking hit you first. I'm just nuts. Teachers would grab you, dig their nails into your fucking neck. You come home, well, 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 she wouldn't have done that unless I'm fucking, <laughs> right? It was all of that shit. Yeah, me and my siblings, we all beat the shit out of each other, you know? And then we all teased the dog and the dog bit all of us. And we never got rid of the dog. One time the dog bit me in the face. I was fucking with it. It was eating it. I was like, ah, ah. And it just latched onto my face. I was like, Rrr. like that. My dad had to stitch me up and everything. We still didn't get rid of the dog. You know? Ah, oh, he's a good dog. He had a moment. Jesus Christ. Well, oh, Jesus Christ. You're starting to put your goddamn face down there. The fucking dog. It's kind of hard to take your dick out at work when you're at home. You know? Some people still manage to do it. They're ordering some call, no pants on. All of a sudden, standing up, they chunk right in the screen. Still figured out a way to get fired. It was unreal. It's kind of good, though, that, you know, those creeps got to take a break because I felt like cancel culture, they were kind of running out of people to cancel, you know? As much as they wanted to make it seem, there really was a finite amount of people that took their dick out at work. Despite the stats, right? Every 1.6 seconds, somebody takes their dick out and shakes it in a woman's face in a cubicle. You're like, huh? Every 1.6 seconds? I must not have been paying attention. Every 3.2 seconds, some man jizzes on a bird and rubs it in a woman's face. Holy shit. I didn't know that happened, right? Yeah, so fortunately, they rounded up all of these fucking animals and they got rid of them, right? But it kind of became like this cottage industry. And it was a way to kind of get rid of some men that maybe were in your way, you know? It's like anything. It always, like, you, you know, the initial thing, you agree with it, and then it kind of gets out of control. So, I don't know. They kind of ran out of people, and there was this kind of hilarious moment, like last year, where they started to try and cancel, like, dead people. <laughs> Remember that? 
all of a sudden, I don't know where like John Wayne was trending. I'm like, what, they got some found footage? You got a new movie coming out that maybe they shelved? And all of a sudden, it was all these stupid ass woke white people, right? Oh my God, did you see what John Wayne said in Playboy in 1971? Can you? This is a bunch of fucking white people all up in arms about a dead white guy. I can no longer tolerate this. I can no longer tolerate dead for 45 years, John Wayne saying things in a magazine that doesn't exist anymore. I am here for black people. It's fucking idiots. What kind of a fucking idiot white person refers to themselves as woke? You know, if you, if you actually were socially conscious, you'd realize that white people stole that word from black people. Once again, doing the Elvis thing, right? But you know what? I blame black people for that. One of them fucked up. They were at a party, there was white people there, and they let it slip out. <laughs> Stay woke, however the fuck you say it, and some white person heard it like, ah, oh, who is that? <laughs> oh my God. Stay woke, I wanna say that. I gotta say that around my white friends so they know that I'm down. Oh my God, I'm gonna fucking say that. <laughs> fucking woke. I'm fucking woke, I'm a woke signaler. I fucking had it, I've had it. I support black people in my white apartment on Twitter. That's what I do. I'm fucking here for you. Every white person likes to lie to themselves that they were alive, you know, 150 years ago, that they would have been working on the Underground Railroad trying to help slaves escape, right? I would have been one of the good white people. That's, I would have taken time out of my day, risked my life. And the reality is, is you'd be doing back then exactly what you're doing today, nothing. Not a fucking thing. Maybe a little hashtag, Black Lives Matter. Oh my God, I, my heart breaks on my L-shaped couch. Oh. <laughs> my favorite thing about the Black Lives Matter marches was the, the store windows that would have the plywood over the windows and then it would say Black Lives Matter on top of the plywood. I just love the duality of that message, you know? It's like, Black Lives Matter, we're all the same, we're all one. Don't burn down my store, you fucking animals! Everybody is welcome in this store. Anyone can come in, one at a time, follow him! It's just a safe space for everyone. Yeah. John Wayne was born in 1907. That's what the fuck he's gonna sound like. Then you got all these douchebags going like, that's not an excuse. It's like, yes it is. It absolutely is. You are of your time. Look at these young kids. Remember that for like a year and a half? They'd take a water bottle. They're all standing around, and one kid would flip it, and if it landed upright, they'd lose, oh, 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 shit. They just lose their fucking minds. Oh. I didn't understand it, but I'm born in 1968, so I'm just like, all right, well, no one tried to slap it out of the way, you know? You do it enough times, it's going to fucking land upright. What is happening here, right? I didn't want to ruin their good time, you know? They're excited, they're gonna get on their scooters and ride off. <laughs> like a little posse or some shit. I'm like, ah, you can do that. Yeah. So that was like a thing for like half a second. Sean Connery died. The great Sean Connery. Yeah, my favorite James Bond of all time. Yeah, and he was getting a proper send off for about eight minutes on Twitter. And then the first hairy leg white chick shows up, right? <laughs> And she's just got to be like, yeah, yeah. Are we really going to celebrate this man who advocated the hitting of women? It's like, first of all, he didn't advocate hitting women, okay? He just said, you know, every once in a while, you give him a little slap. <laughs> yeah, give him a little back of the hand. Remind him who's making the box office. You <laughs> reset their hard drive. <laughs> That's all he said, okay? Yes, it's a crazy statement in 2021. 1976, you know, it's not good, but it's not crazy, <laughs> right? And he's born in 1930. You gotta put the shit in historical perspective. You ever watch, I love old movies. You ever watch movies from the 30s, 40s, and 50s? Yeah, 
anytime a woman even has heightened emotion, there's some guy like, ah, get a hold of yourself, see? Yeah, go make me a pie, put it on a windowsill. Right? That's what he grew up watching. I grew up in the 70s. I thought being a truck driver was a cool thing. You know, you had a monkey for a friend. You're going around showing their titties. I thought that that was the world. I had no idea. That's what I was watching. My thing is, is okay, so if you're going to cancel all of these fucking dead guys and you're going to shit all over them after they're dead and they can't defend themselves, wh why are you only going after men? You know, what about all the horrible women in history? You can't just go after the men. That would be sexist. And this is what they don't want. You know? I mean, what about Coco Chanel? Great example. Coco Chanel, widely considered a feminist icon. She started her own purse factory, right? The 19-teens or 20s, whatever the hell she did. I can't imagine the sexism that she had to, she had to deal with, you know? An amazing accomplish, accomplishment. Hats off to her, right? However... <laughs> She was also a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah, that's like half her fucking Wikipedia page. Just sitting there, waiting for someone to read it. Right out in the open, nothing. Let's bring him to a nice, normal, mainstream topic so everybody can drive home happy, no fights, all right? Sound good? All right, great, let's talk abortion. There you go. <laughs> Pro-choice always makes sense to me because I don't like people telling me what to do and I always just like, it's your body. Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do with your body? So that always made sense. However, I still think you're killing a baby. <laughs> See, that's where it gets weird. Pro-choice people are like, well, it's not a life yet. It's not a baby yet. May or may not be true. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I'll tell you, my gut tells me that doesn't make sense. It's not a baby yet. That would be like if I was making a cake and I poured some batter in a pan and I put it in the oven and then five minutes later you came by and you grabbed the pan, you threw it across the floor and I went, what the fuck, you just ruined my birthday cake? And then you were like, well, that wasn't a cake yet. Well, it would have been. If you didn't do what you just did, there would have been a cake in 50 minutes. Something happened to that cake, you cake murdering son of a bitch. Right? No, I think I know. I think I know how to raise a kid. You know what it is? You just, you just play catch with them. That's how you raise a kid. You play catch with them. You just talk about life. You distract them by throwing the ball. They don't even notice you're filling their heads up with your theories. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't do it the old school way the way your parents used to. Sit down across from you. You want to tell me about your day? Right? What's that, son? Ah, we're not going to church today. Fuck that. <laughs> That's all a bunch of bullshit. God's everywhere, but I got to go down there to see him. Really? And he's mad at me down there and I owe you money. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> It's not down, it's in here. They try to take it. It's down, it's in here. You do something good, you feel good. You do something bad, you feel bad, you know? Unless you're like a sociopath, then you don't feel shit. Unless you got somebody duct taped upside down in your apartment, you know? And, and if you do something like that, I want you to feel like you can come to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, come to me, confess all of that. We'll go down to the precinct, we'll tell them everything. Yeah, I'm gonna turn you in. This isn't fucking Dexter. What are you, are you mind? Let's have a little empathy here. Put yourself in a lesbian's shoes. Who do lesbians think? Women. Who do they who do who do they do they move in with? Women. Who do they get in relationships with? Women. Who do they eventually marry? Women. And I was thinking like, oh my god, I did that. I know what it's like to live with one of those fucking things. <laughs> I know exactly what that it's hopeless. Trying to make them happy. Hey, I bought you the shiny thing. Did I do it right? Huh? Trying to get them to take responsibility for their actions. Not gonna happen. The best you're gonna get is I'm sorry, but I know what it's like to be winning a fucking argument. You're winning, you're winning, you're winning, and then they turn it around. They're crying. You're apologizing. You're thinking, what the fuck just happened? How am I losing this shit? I had you on the ropes. You feel so dumb. You gotta go for a walk, and you're just thinking, how did I lose again? And then you figure it out. It makes you feel stupid, and then you see some bald idiot with a giant orange mustache. And you're like, you know what? Why don't you take some of that shit? <laughs> I always say my wife, my, when my wife was pregnant, I would say my wife, you know, she's pregnant. And then I always have these people say, excuse me, you're supposed to say we're pregnant? You're supposed to say we're pregnant? It's like, well, I'm not a seahorse. So, I'm not fucking pregnant. My wife is pregnant. Look at her, she's putting on weight, her feet are swelling up. You know, she's miserable, fucking miserable. I'm still doing pull-ups. I'm crushing it while being pregnant. I'm still drinking, smoking, yeah. <laughs> I saw a woman a couple months back professional soccer player, right? She goes on to ESPN or one of these sports channels and she starts bitching, going like, I don't understand, how come female athletes don't make as much as male professional athletes, right? And all of these men had to sit there and act like they didn't know what the answer was. 
They had to sit there like dumbfounded, like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, why is that? Uh, that is a conundrum. I have, I have no idea. Literally, I'm sitting at home screaming at the TV because you don't sell any fucking tickets. <laughs> Nobody is going to women's soccer games. You're playing in a 20,000 seat arena. 1,500 people show up. That's not a good night. The promoter lost his fucking ass on that gig. I love about sports is it's a great way to tap out from the news and just, you know, watch a game and get away from it. And now there's like all these causes are getting like attached to it. Like I was watching the World Series and I'm in the middle of watching the World Series and out of nowhere they have this moment, stand up to cancer. I'm watching a ball game and all of a sudden everybody stands up with, holding up a sign of somebody that they either know that's dying of cancer or died of it in the middle of the game. It's just like, what are you doing? I'm trying to watch a game here. You know, no, there's a time and a place. Look, I know somebody. I know somebody that has died of cancer. I would never go to the movies with you and in the middle of it hit pause and be like, oh, by the way, Conan, I know this guy. He died of cancer. It was horrific. I could have lifted him up off the sheet with two fingers. It was horrible. Hey, enjoy. Oh, by the way, I got molested when I was nine. Enjoy the rest. No, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But I think white women started it. worse it's all he do is bitch mode and complain i had no idea how difficult it was to be a white woman in the united states of america evidently it's it's really difficult <laughs> yeah they're always bitching do you have any idea what it's like to be me well i imagine it would be slightly less awesome than my life To you today, sweetheart, huh? Did they not chill your rosé? You know? Was the trolley not running down at the mall? What happened? No, it's unreal. I'm really fucking annoyed how white women have the fucking balls to throw my white privilege in my face. You know? <laughs> Sorry to separate themselves from these white males with their white male privilege. It's like, bitch, you're sitting in a jacuzzi with me. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, what's your fucking whining? Look, here's a little caveat here. So you don't think I'm a complete asshole right out of the gate. All right, if you're fucking, if you live in some honey boo boo lifestyle on the Appalachian Trail, you know, your uncle just banged you in the dirt. All right. So your Christian background is, is part of the, the show. Or yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know. As far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? So, I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good Lord. So I, did I, you I feel you were being something. disrespectful or just you, you were just having fun with some of the crucifixes and stuff like that? I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? <laughs> <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen, <laughs> a you couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically, well, they, just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld. After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I want to. You know what I'm to. talking about? It's a morning show. I understand. I'm like, Thank Thank you I came on. Positive. That kid positive. was missed the graduation, and then, then the, it was a feel-good story. It was a feel-good, and we want to leave. If you want to feel good about America, you watch the morning shows. You don't watch this, you know. And we were joking earlier. If that kid's story about the graduation was late night, that would have been a whole different story. What do you think? He's still missing. We can't <laughs> find him. All we found was his hat. But you watch in the morning. It's great. It all worked out. He got his own personal graduation. Like, I was in such a great mood. Look how yellow this couch is. Like, <laughs> really? Is that, is that you in action or is this another photo shoot? That, yeah, photo it's shoot. a photo shoot. People do photo shoots. Yeah, I know. Have you ever seen like a movie poster and you'll see a movie star I have. who's clearly five foot two, yet somehow he's as tall as the supermodel? I have. I have. Yeah, that's, that's a photo shoot. They fix stuff. Look, I'm sorry you're just on the web, man. You, you took it to, he took it to this place. I'm not trying to shit on his website. What is it called again? Huh? Zippity-doo-dah.com? You got it. Huh? You motherfucker. That's you it. You have me on your show when you start trashing my DVD. You're a sensitive man. <laughs> Bill, thanks so much for being here. I love this show. You're oh, one of my favorite you. comedians. I'm excited to talk to you. Well, I'm excited to be here. These chairs are horrific. <laughs> this is like, this is designed for like, I don't know what age. It's not like six to eight. Like when you're 11, this is like the perfect size. It's not quite adult size, it's not kid size. 
I already slouch. It's going to be slouch. a bad interview, dude, and I'm blaming the chair. I slouch or go down like this or All right. cross the legs. Uh, Bill, you're, are you the head writer on the show, or how do you, how do you work in the writer's room on the show? Because you write your stand-up specials, you know, obviously you're a writer, but you've never really written on a sitcom before if you go through your credits. You hadn't really been on a show before. Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> Just right out of the gate, he goes negative. <laughs> never really saw you write on anything before, Bill. Um, <laughs> there was all these other nice things on your IMDb page I could have brought up, but I noticed this one glaring thing that you've never done. And right out of the gate. Was it because I made fun of the, the chairs? I'm sorry. Here in the Emily Fan Cave, hanging out with actor comedian Bill Burr. I like that you said actor comedian. Well, you know, I usually go comedian actor. Look, <laughs> dude, if you saw my IMDb page, you'd definitely know it was, uh, it was comedian, comedian actor. actor. Yeah. It's, I, you're one of those guys, you don't need compliments. You uh, actually need to be pulled down a yes, little bit. Yes, Bill. To be tethered. I give to, myself. To, to something. And I would say that it. it, it it betrays an underlying insecurity, but there isn't with you. You're just full-on fucking ego. <laughs> I'm full-on I'm full ego. Yes. I love it. Jesse, uh, you did so bad, one of our guests is about to quit. Uh, I don't know what else to tell Oh, if there's a negative lining, Tony will find it. There it is, right between the ray of sunshine. There's that little nugget of negativity, you fucking cunt. Yeah. Ah, That's smarmy it. fucking cunt. Yeah, Jesus it. Christ. If we went to a movie together, would uh, we sit next to each other? Would you want a seat between us? You know, oh, Jesus. Because that's a tough thing. I'd want to sit like nine rows behind you and, and just tug on your ponytail. <laughs> you savage. That's what I would do. Oh, from flannel underscore toilet, semicolon. Um, when is Do You Think Moonshine will make it make their big comeback? Well, Moonshoes. I, I can't read, by the way. When is Do You Think Moonshoes? We'll make their big comeback. What are what are moon shoes? It's like trampolines on the feet. You see, like you're bouncing around like you're on the moon. I didn't know that they ever had them. <laughs> <laughs> Flannel toilet. I had no idea. Uh, so, but if I had to guess, when when did they come up? <laughs> I, I don't yeah. Know. Does anybody fucking know? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, at some point I was going to make a point here. That's why I keep looking at here, and I just realize I'm blocking myself out of the camera. I love that you have the jib camera for this, like it's an action movie. Let's 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 swoop in at these two guys sitting in these unbelievably small chairs. I literally feel like I'm gonna fall onto the floor. This is insane. You really went all out with the audience, though. They got full size adult chairs. <laughs> Are these like from the twenties before they had like horse tranquilizers in our food and everybody was like five foot one? Yeah, da 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 da. It's funny, when you said we win, I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying, I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African-American thing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, but I don't think that that little life jacket that they gave you was designed for someone your size. Yeah, we'll see, man. I don't, I don't think it's uh, it'll support 315 pounds, but uh, let's hope for the best. Come on, Dwayne, you got this. There you go. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> Talking to a Seahawk fan here. Now, is it true the rumor is that you guys aren't as loud as they say that they actually designed the stadium Auto, to contain it? <laughs> Seahawks! Steve, like and this is Southside Steve TV, and this is Bill Burr. That's your question? I'm just saying who you are. Oh, yeah, all right. I don't like you creep me out with that big microphone and that country western shirt. Oh, no, this isn't country western. It's like it's hip now to oh, wear okay. this. This is my nightclub look. Yeah, okay. come on. All right. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, what is this? Rock 100.5. Mm -hmm. This is the worst interview I've ever done. <laughs> and he's wearing Stetson cologne or something. It's just really. Over, overpowering. How you doing? You know what he looks like? He looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> no. The background guy behind the, uh, the the big kingpin. Why don't you handle this? <laughs> Where are you guys from? You live here. You live here. How the hell did you end up here? Uh, Long story. Long story. Shifty. Felonies? Yes. Is that a Rolex? Yes, it is. I finally bought one. 25 years in this business. Is it white gold or stainless? I don't know what it is. Is it heavy? No. Then it's stainless. Oh, is that what it is? I well, just... thank you. Thank you for taking my watch down a notch. I finally felt successful. You see this? <laughs> you wouldn't say that if I had brown or black hair. I guarantee you. Blonde hair, you'd be over here giving me your watch. <laughs> this is the only way you can be comfortable in these fucking chairs. This is like in the middle of my back. 
like, oh my God, I love you, but I hate this set. <laughs> this is the lowest budget shit. You know what it is? It's the rent. It's the fucking rent. You did all this stuff. You should get rid of that camera and get some chairs. What, what kind of chair would you prefer? Comfortable, adult-sized chair. You want me to be a soft, uh, you know, you know, one of those Twitter tough guys? When guys come and sit on the couch, I go right after them. Do you respect me for that? No, I don't. <laughs> your big dumb desk hiding behind your I microphone. I respect you for keeping it real, Colin. Yeah, I kept it a hundred. What about you can't when you call can... somebody out and then have them in front of you? That's punk. Can't no, do that. but then you can actually just admit that you're wrong when the guy's delivering, because now he's delivering, he's still trash. Well, yeah, him. he's not admitting that he's get wrong. Yeah, jump in. Yeah. Here he yeah, comes. Get in the middle. Get in the middle. Two studs. Here, here comes. Here comes homeschool. Look, he's got on buckle shoes. I uh, know. I bet he made those. <laughs> He went to one of those little house in the prairie schools where, like, the person next to you was eight years older, but you were still in the same grade. <laughs> I got to tell you, the Laker fans are even worse. I can't stand them. At least Yankee fans show up at the start of the game. Those Laker fans, they show up in, like, the second quarter. They had to get, like, Botox before they came down to the game. <laughs> oh, no. Ouch. <laughs> but you like living in L.A., you said. I love, yeah, I love L.A., and I also love, I like living there. I don't like their teams. I hate the Jets. I'm sick of people saying Rex, <laughs> I'm sick of people saying Rex Ryan is confident. He's not confident. That guy cries himself to sleep with a vat of ice cream every night. Oh, I'm not buying God. it. I'm not. You know what I Because the older guys, Robert Kelly's and all that, they all call you Billy. Colin calls you Billy, but I fucking Bill. You I'm know just what I mean? immediately noticing. Uh, I don't know about the chain if it's if it's <laughs> yeah. thick enough to be yeah. that war that level of confidence. Yeah, yeah. it's, well, but, well, it's more of a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> when the chain's out, yeah, I see, just, he has on a fat chick ankle bracelet around yeah, his just, fucking neck. Well, I just hate the Jets straight up. <laughs> being a Patriots fan, I hate their whole slogan: "Play like a play jet." Play like a jet. Play like a jet. Yeah. Why would you say that? <laughs> they haven't won in like fifty years. Why don't you play like a Patriot, uh, like a Steeler, uh, or a Steeler? See, play like a jet. The, and that stupid, that fireman who gets on his boyfriend's shoulder like he's some, <laughs> like he's some hot chick at a Bon Jovi concert. <laughs> We're laughing already because uh, here in the Cayman Islands uh, interview lounge because comedian Bill Burr has stopped by this morning. Bill, thanks for coming to the Cayman Kind Studio. Oh, room. thank you for uh, having me yeah. in the Cayman Island uh, <laughs> yes. Memorial Studios. That's what it is. <laughs> Something like and we're, that. And we're, we're glad to have you. Uh, you got a, you got a busy week. We're just looking at your schedule. You're you're going to be on Fallon and Conan, right, this yep. week. I'm media boy this week. I got a, a, a new animated show or a cartoon, as I still call it, coming uh -huh. out on Netflix called F is for Family. Uh, six episodes. Uh, it's about this family. The Murphy family it takes place in 1973. And it's the 70s as far as uh, how me, Mike Price, one of the co-creators of the show, how we remember it. And your voice of the dad. I'm the voice of yeah. the dad, who's an amalgam of my dad, Mike's dad, and everybody else in the writer's room. Uh, it's basically we set it back where uh, in that time where you could, you know, you know, kids today, you know, they wear helmets when they ride bicycles, mm -hmm. they have play dates and all that. And back then it was, they just sent you outside, like, get out of here. <laughs> you just go outside. Yeah. You could, you could literally bring a gun to the airport back then. If you had you, your you briefcase, as long as you didn't wave it around, <laughs> it was funny. fine. It was just like a different time. And I just, um, throughout my career, I've been telling like family stories on, uh, on stage and they always did well. And then somewhere about eight years ago, as that, you know, play date generation mm. came of age yeah. and started getting like not groans like sip like oh like started going like that even though that they they had dads like my dad right like that dad still exists and mom still exists but now it's like socially this whole oh that's bullying oh that's traumatic for the kid and it just became like this overly thinking things and um so I just got frustrated and I stopped telling the stories but I knew they were still funny and one day I was walking my dog I was like what if I just animated them mm -hmm. And I just was going to do these little five-minute vignettes on my website, like, you know, Burr family goes to get a Christmas tree, and then all the dysfunction. Of course, being a comedian, I procrastinated, and I never did it. Uh -huh. So then one day I had a meeting with uh, Vince Vaughn's company, Wild West, and I just sort of just threw it out there, and they were looking to do the show. Then we got in business with Netflix, and Netflix came up with the brilliant idea to serialize it, which I didn't know means have one episode leading to the next one, right. which really took the writing to another level. And, um, and then here we are. Four years later. Is it, yeah. No, I mean, we, we had a chance to watch it today. First of all, you know, it's F, it's called F is for family, but probably not for the family. It's it's an adult version. Well, it's I mean, not for kids. Show. Right, yeah. not for kids. Yeah, but families will totally be able to relate to this. <laughs> if you want understand. to go and... Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you had any sort of, uh, I don't know, family that I, you know, 
I grew up in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where well, how the, close is it to to your family? Like, how many kids were did you grow up with? Oh no, it's it's if we had we had six kids. Oh, okay. There's only, only three kids. I mean, you're not gonna have six different kids and draw them. It's not yeah, like Top to Cat where you can have twenty cats running around. It becomes a pain in the butt. So you just sort of like yeah. I took it's a lot pieces. Of yeah, pieces of all, uh, you know, just pieces from my life. Every writer. What I like about it is my family can watch it and not be like, oh my God, you put all d our dirty laundry right. out there. But they they will see elements and hints and stuff like that. And sometimes it's just a ten speed bicycle. Other times it's like a catchphrase, like my dad saying, I'll put you through that bleeping wall, was something that he used to say. And um, He can't say that now. Dads can't say that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. Just yeah, you can do all of that stuff. Like, like, me in. This is yeah. whole, like, this is whole chicken little, the sky is falling and that people believe you can't say things. Like that stuff you were talking about, like the polar bear with the... Yeah, the Starbucks, Starbucks cookies. It's the Starbucks yeah, yeah that, that is one yeah. of the biggest non-stories I've ever heard in <laughs> yeah, my life. Yeah, like it is. It's throat splash. <laughs> no, it's a scarf. We screwed it up. It's supposed to be a scarf. Oh, okay. That's what it should be. It's supposed to be uh, very flipping out. Right. Half of those people flipping out about the uh, the polar bear. You know they have iPads and flat screen TVs that all end up in the ocean, right, which right. is why those polar bears are drowning. That's why. Yeah. But you're gonna see. You're not gonna adjust that party life, but you're gonna bitch about the the cookie. Right. Yes. We, uh, but yeah, um, so, yes. uh, but F is for family. It, it, when is it available on Netflix? Uh, December eighteenth. Okay. Um, all you can binge watch all of them. Binge watch. Yeah. All, all yeah. So it took us over a year to draw and do all that. And you well, can, that's what you, yeah. you can watch it all in about <laughs> two hours forty do. minutes and be like, "Hey, when's the next six coming out?" But I'm really proud of it. Uh, it's not just like you know we can curse on the show, which we yeah. obviously. That's what I meant do. by saying for the kids. Yeah, you know? but there's still a lot of we we still is that baby of the greatest moment in the end like when it right. always came back and I just remember with right. my family they'd be, we're going to get a Christmas tree and there'd be all this traumatic dysfunction of yeah. trying to get the army of kids and everybody into the car and having the whole thing station work station wagon right. yeah and then uh, but then in the end you know the fire's going you're decorating the tree <laughs> and it all works uh, yeah out. and everything settles the dust settles yeah, so back down again yeah it was very uh, no, the, no the show is great and we really enjoyed it and it's funny and it does have that it, the uh, that honeymooners kind of like you said, baby, that, you're great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's a really cool uh, to watch it because to me it's a period piece. I grew up in the '70s, right. phone on the wall, yeah. like you said, you know, the stingrays, the ten-speed bike. So it's it's gonna be fun, and I think even for a younger generation to look back and go, wow, that's that was probably a cool time to grow up. But also, I think a lot of them can also relate to the same stuff. I mean, we're gonna have you yeah. know kids wanting you know taking out the family car. Kids trying to uh -huh. hook up, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you have some big stars, some big vo you know, voice stars. Laura oh yeah, Dern, yeah. Right? Uh, uh, Laura Dern does the voice of uh, Susan, uh, Frank's wife, the character that I play. Justin Long does Kevin. Uh, Haley Reinhardt from uh, uh, American Idol. Yeah, does the voice of me, uh, little me, I should say. <laughs> oh, is that right? Uh, Debbie Derryberry. Nice. If you watch any Pixar movie, she's probably in all over it. Uh, Gary Cole, Dave Keckner. I mean, it's a big name. Sam how Rockwell. Does that happen? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get these people? You know on what? Board we wrote that? a great script. Right. That's what happened. We wrote a really funny script, and then I forget who signed on first. But once you bring one of them in right. the boat, then all of a sudden it becomes, oh, this is a real thing. And uh, it was probably the most exciting thing was was getting people that I have all that respect for right. to actually react to what we all wrote. And you know. Um, you know, we had a great writers room, Dave Richardson, Emily Towers, uh, Tom Giannis, and we just, I just remember laughing mm -hmm. the whole time. I mean, there's obviously, you know, it's always hard when you first start an episode, you know, yeah. just getting the rock moving up the hill. But once you got that first draft and after the second punch up, that's when it really got fun. And that's when you could really tighten it up. And really, you how know, many episodes? Uh, this? There's six. Okay. So they, they kind of gave us six so just to see how it does. And if uh, how it works at Netflix is they put the whole thing out at once. Mm -hmm. And then if people respond to it, then they just do an order of the second season. So when that's going to happen, I don't know how soon. You need that views, happens, right? So. I mean, you, you, oh, that's, I'm sure. yeah, that's how it yes. works, yeah. right? With the, and we're also coming out the same day as Star Wars. So oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping, uh, <laughs> That's right, you can't get tickets to Star Wars, so, you know, yeah. this is for Maybe Netflix. people will watch. People are telling me, I'm going to watch while I stand in line for Star Wars. Yeah, I'm going to binge watch this stuff. But that's what people do now. Like, uh, Christine has, mm. you know, like, uh, got me into Walking Dead, and oh, that's yeah. how oh. you guys watch it. Just, binge you know, watching. Yeah. Oh, I watched oh, yeah. uh, uh, Bloodline, and I oh, watched yes. Peaky Blinders. I'm watching oh, Fargo. 
Mm-hmm. And, you it's know, too just, easy. I mean, because yeah. the next one just rolls and rolls. And you, yeah, you next thing you know, it's four couch, in the morning. Right? And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> i got to do radio here. I just want to see what happens in the next episode. Okay, I'm watching another hour. I just yeah. what, and then it goes and it goes. But, I mean, Netflix is such a great venue. They've got, I think, the most Golden Globe nominations. Oh, it's is like, that right? Yeah. It's Are they not like afraid the to, to be. be not politically correct? Because, yeah, I mean, it, in parts of the show, there was like, wow, you... Well, no, could, yeah, the, you the, the networks, were, their notes were basically push it further. It was the dream. Wow. But that whole political correctness, it's just, I swear to That's God. That's your hot button, Bill. No, it's not. It isn't, though. It's just like people are adults. They understand. Look, if if animated characters can destroy <laughs> all of your parenting in six episodes, you're like the worst parent ever. You're the worst parent Yeah, ever. or yeah. there's something wrong with your kid. He was just born with the Damien seed or, yeah. or whatever. But it's just... just you know, it was refreshing to see that, you know, you do those things because ironically, and I, I think maybe it was the inspiration for it too, is that's what you got away with in the 70s. You couldn't do Archie Bunker now. Maybe, maybe you could you do it. You totally that, could. If, right? if, if the networks you could and the advertisers could just stand up to these, like so many of these groups, they're just bullies and they deliberately take things out of context. Look, I'm a believer that if you're wrong, you apologize. But you don't let somebody, if they take something out of it, like that stupid polar bear. Yeah. It's like, no, it's a scarf. <laughs> yeah. It's a scarf. Yeah. So now I have to apologize because you think we, like, what kind of a dope <laughs> thinks that Starbucks is going to have a bear with a slit throat yeah. in the holidays? Yeah. Like they sat around and have, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We have polar bears with its throat cut. <laughs> Wait a minute, do huh? we know? Uh, this, this, will, this will drum up business and, and just... And then I think Have it's they also. Apologize yet? Do we know? Because no, they probably no, no, they haven't apologized I yet. Okay. But I, I think it becomes like it becomes like clickbait. It's it's right. really lazy journalism, and, yeah. and it's just it's an easy thing. I swear to God, like comedians get more blowback than bankers, who depleted the savings of people who fought in wars for this right. country, and right. they're eating Alpo now sitting in some old folks' home instead of their, their, their house that they should have had. And those guys, none of them go to jail. But God forbid you tell a joke in a strip mall right. that somebody del- and one person out right. of like 400 doesn't like it. And that becomes the story. And they write a blog about it. And they treat the blogger like, like they won like a Peabody Award for the New York <laughs> right, Times. Right. It's, just, it's just some dope in the crowd who sat there and watched a hundred subjects go by and everything was funny. And then it came to their part, their part of their life. And, oh, that was a statement. Yeah. He meant that right. one. Struck a nerve. Yeah, they're right. babies. Have they're babies, won? and if you just stand up to them, they're bullies. Have you changed up your stand up at all? Because no. you said you felt it happen. Like you felt this change about eight years ago, and a lot, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, a lot of comedians yeah. have addressed this. You know, I never felt it in the club. I uh-huh. just saw people's, like, I, I just saw how it worked. And, you know, I have a, um, a podcast network, okay? Plug it. The, the, all, the all Things yeah. Comedy Network. And when we have a friend of ours has a special coming out, we go, okay, we're all tweeting in three, two, one. Right. And there's like, you know, four or five hundred of us. And we all tweet and it gets momentum. That's right. 500 people in a country of over 400 million can get right. momentum on social media with 500 tweets at the same time. So when they sit there and they act like the, the sky is falling, everybody's freaking out. It's strategic, you know, how you get offended. Right. Like, you know, they're on, you know, T minus, we're going to be right. offended. <laughs> and T minus, you know, and, and. Well, I know, go back to Seinfeld, he won't do colleges anymore. At least that's what I've heard because it's so PC that. I don't know that he won't do colleges. I saw that interview. I think he was just, he was making, that was another thing. He just basically said what was out there. And then even that was like, oh, you know, right. is he thinking about retiring? And even then they, they, they blew that up. Right. It's just constantly, I think because there's so many places to watch and listen to things now if there's anything if there's any ripple you have to make it look like oh my god what is this right and try to try to like just just pumping everything up and making a story even when there isn't one there so it's a cartoon it's adult <laughs> humor there's adults it's fun nothing it's bad fun. is gonna happen yeah. isis doesn't get stronger <laughs> it's, it's just relax no, just sit down and watch it if you don't like it don't watch it if you do, watch it. Binge it. If you do, binge. Yeah, it's it's yeah. fun. It's uh, F is for family. And, again, it's available December 18th on, on Netflix. And, yes. You know, and, uh, again, you have Depending on the fact that I know you have mature adults listening to this, and they'll be able that, to They'll love it. They'll love it. They'll love it. <laughs> yeah. the most we'll have a grew, good time. Have most of them grew up in the 70s. It's going to be a, like, a homecoming thing. There you go. Bill, thanks for coming in. Hey, thank you for having me. me. I appreciate yeah. it. Bill Burr in the studio, everybody.